Let's turn to the broader markets, uh, bring in J.P. Morgan's chair of global research, Joyce Chang. Joyce, it's great to have you back. Good morning. Great to be with you. Uh, you guys have been active on the research side. I did notice the other day uh, you had a bit about inflation and argued that the, the downshift is underway and that we could be looking at headline CPI in the low threes by September. Well, I think you are going to see headline CPI um, come down by half. Um, but really what we need to see is that domestic inflation comes down further. And in a lot of the meetings we've had with policymakers, they've really said that, look, you know, even 3 percent is still too high. So I think, you know, that move down from double digit to 5 percent is happening with inflation. But it's really how do you go from 5 percent um, to 3 percent? And that's why I think the central banks are going to stick with, you know, over tightening here. They want to anchor expectations. Um, there's still a lot of um, you know, concern about financial stability in the markets place as well, given all the developments that had happened in the UK. So I think that you know central banks here are going to hold the line, not just the Fed, but the ECB and the Bank of England also. All right. Steve was just mentioning uh, consumer spending. And one lesson from the banks this week has definitely been the level of deposits still two to five times pre-pandemic levels. Are central banks ra grappling with the fact that there's still a lot of unburnt furniture in the fireplace? Well, we've seen, though, a big drop in the excess savings. I mean, excess savings were extraordinary at the beginning of the year at 14 percent of GDP. And by the end of the year, we're going to see this down to the long term average. We look at Chase checking balances and they are still well above 2019 levels. But we're seeing more divergence here in the lower income levels. Um, you know, that's actually begun to fall more sharply. So I think you still have, um, you know, cushions here, but they're, we're going through them pretty quickly. Maybe you get through this in year end, but I think that's going to become more obvious by next year that these cushions, um, you know, have disappeared. So, you know, I think the excess savings has helped a lot this year. We're also starting to see that, you know, some, some weakness in the earnings that are coming out as profitability is coming down. So those are factors that we just continue to watch very closely, um, particularly as we do see growth coming down um, as we go into the fourth quarter and the beginning of 2023. Joyce, just looking around the world right now, um, whether it's the rapid rise in rates that we're, we've just been talking about, whether it's some of these incredibly volatile swings we've seen in currency markets, this LDI crisis that played out recently in the U.K., can we expect to see more of that type of dynamic manifest here? And if so, what would you be steering clear of in terms of in investments? Well, I mean, look, I think there's a lot of lessons learned from the LDI crisis because it really does show you um, the importance of financial stability and the market liquidity conditions. So everybody thinks about accidents happening in emerging markets, frontier markets. But what we've seen is that there's vulnerability even in the liquid sovereign markets. And one thing that we do continue to track very closely is just the market liquidity conditions. And they are very depressed. I mean, for U.S. Treasuries, we're seeing some of the worst levels um, in 15 years. I mean, the markets are not broken, they're functioning, but liquidity um, is a concern. So I do think that there is um, the possibility of more accidents. And just coming back from the IMF World Bank meetings last week, you know, emerging market its frontier countries, there's been more talk about restructuring, um, repayments problems, you know, reserve depletion as well as we've seen um, the dollar strength. So I do think emerging markets could be one area in the frontier markets, not a systemic crisis, but in these frontier markets where we need to keep an eye out. But it's also the liquid sovereign markets given liquidity conditions where you could see this um, heightened volatility continue. 